Today, we're discussing console versus PC. Now we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. Seven Days to Die has come a very long way in its nearly eight years of development. However, the console version has not received an update since December of 2017, while the PC version has continued to get updates and is even due for another major update here in the not too distant future. Now, while the console version has not received any updates lately, it still does have a massive fan base, boasting thousands upon thousands of concurrent players on the console version during the weekend. So today, we're going to take a look at the console version of Seven Days to Die, the PC version of Seven Days to Die, and go over some of the major differences between the two. Now, I've picked five areas in which to discuss, but there are many, many more. So if you know of any other major differences between the console version and the PC version, hop on down to the comments section and let us all know. But now we're going to get started with difference number five, skills. The skills and perk system in Seven Days to Die on console are vastly different from those currently on the PC version. For instance, on the console version, in order to increase proficiency in the use of a certain item, you actually have to use it. By performing an action with that item, you actually gain experience for that item and level up your skill using that item. Now on the console version, you still do have skill points that you can spend on perks. However, the choice of perks is very, very different. Also, the cost in skill points to unlock these perks is very different as well. The cost to unlock certain perks on the console version range wildly from one skill point to increase basic item usage, like the pistol here, all the way up to as many as 30 skill points for some of the advanced perks. And obtaining these skill points is done through leveling up. Now that's the same as the PC version. However, every time you level up your character on the console version, you gain five skill points. So as you can see, to get some of those higher tier perks, you are going to have to level up your character quite a bit and save up those perk points. The PC version of the skills and perks system is much simpler. Pretty much, you level up your character and you earn a skill point. You can use that skill point to increase your attribute and perks, and generally speaking, all of the perks cost one point. The only caveat to this is that as you increase your attribute level, some of the attributes do cost more than one point. So so it is a much simpler and much more streamlined system. The PC version also completely gets rid of the idea that by using an item, you get more proficient in that item's use. As I said, the PC version has a much more simple and streamlined skills and perks system. Gain experience to level up. Each level up earns you a skill point. Spend that skill point to increase your attributes and perks. Major difference number four is items. The the item system in Seven Days to Die is vastly different when comparing the console version with the PC version. For instance, on the console version, you cannot craft or repair an item until you actually find the schematic. Now I'm going to use the pistol here to demonstrate how the item system works on console, but before you can repair or craft a pistol, you have to first find the schematic. Once you've read the book or schematic that unlocks craft crafting for pistols, the next thing you have to do is find the unique item-specific parts that you will use to craft your pistol. For instance, the pistol takes these four parts right here. Once you have one of each of these parts, you can combine them together to create yourself a pistol. Another unique feature of the console item system is the ability to combine items at the workbench. You can actually combine two of the same items together to give you a better item. Now on the console version, the max item quality for any item in the game is 600. So you can continue to combine parts all the way up until you get that part level to 600. Now with the pistol here, I can combine 
combine all of these parts together and each one of the individual parts will increase in quality rating. By combining all of these qualities together, we will get our finished pistol quality. Once you have all of the individual parts up to level 600, combine those together, you will have your level 600 pistol. And the same holds true for any item in the game that is made in this way. It is kind of a complex but rather unique and interesting item system. On PC, however, items are much more streamlined and straightforward. They have a quality rating of 1 to 6, and most item crafting can be unlocked by unlocking certain perks. Now, the schematics are still in the game, so you can still find item schematics as well. However, a lot of the crafting can be done by unlocking perks. The PC version, however, completely got rid of the combining feature that the console version has. The quality of item that you can craft is fully dependent on your perk level for that item. So for instance, if we were going to craft a pistol on the PC version, the quality of pistol would depend on our gunslinger perk. And it is not possible to craft the top quality items on the PC version. Those you either have to find in loot, buy them from the trader, or receive them as a trader quest reward. The item system in the console version and the PC version are extremely different. Major difference number three is traders. Now thankfully the console version did get traders in the game. When it originally came out there were no traders on the console version. Thankfully traders were added to the console version. However the traders on the console version are not nearly as versatile as they are on the PC version. Primarily because the console version does not have access to trader quests. The questing system on the PC version is monumentally important. It adds so much to the game. It gives your character a sense of purpose, a goal to obtain, plus gives you an excellent way to gather more loot, earn more dukes, get more experience, and overall just feel like a badass. Trader Bob here sends me out to do a job. I gear up, head to the location, slay some zombie jerks, come back with a backpack full of awesome loot, and get my reward. Trader quests in the PC version added a lot to Seven Days to Die. And unfortunately, the console version does not have the trader quest option. Major difference number two is zombie jerks. Now there is no denying that the zombies on the console version of Seven Days to Die and the zombies on the PC version of Seven Days to Die are completely different. The PC version has a whole lot more variety in the zombies that it has to offer. And the fun pimps have even been introducing new HD zombies into the game as well. Now granted, there are still some of the old holdouts left in the game. A lot of the names have stayed the same, but most of the skins have actually changed. But it is undeniable that the current current PC version of Seven Days to Die has much more variety when it comes to zombie jerks. Also, the zombie AI has changed quite a bit as well. On the console version, the zombie AI is pretty limited. It's, it's pretty much what you would expect from a zombie. They're not the sharpest tools in the shed. Designing a horde base on a console version is completely different than from the PC version because the zombie behaviors are so different. On the console version, underground bases were king because zombies could not go underground. However, the PC version completely changed that. Now, instead of dumb, stupid zombies, we have MIT graduate zombies. These zombies somehow know the best, straightest, quickest way to get to you regardless of your design. They know how to get to you and they will get to you as fast as they can. And thinking about building an underground base or an underground bunker? Yeah, that doesn't work very much anymore. That's because the new zombies have auger hands. They will quickly dig down to you. So needless to say, the zombie pathing and AI in Seven Days to Die has changed dramatically. And major difference number one is performance and quality 
quality. Seven Days to Die has come an extremely far distance when it comes to performance and quality. On the console version, you frequently dealt with lag issues, the graphics were noticeably lesser than on the PC version, and on the console version, you frequently dealt with this issue. I call this the load freeze. As you're driving your mini bike down the road, all of a sudden, you'll see the little red circle in the top, the logo starting to spin, and you know, oh crap, this is gonna suck. And you'll basically hit a wall, and it will freeze until the game loads the ne next chunk and allows you to continue. This is extremely frustrating and, and annoying, to say the least. Now imagine if you are in the hub city on the console, driving your, your mini bike, trying to get out of Dodge, being chased by like a feral white and some dogs, and then all of a sudden you hit this error, you hit this load freeze. By the time that the lo next chunk loads, the people chasing you many times have caught up to you and are starting to punch you in the face or bite you in the ass. It was extremely frustrating. Thankfully, the PC version has come a very long way in this regard. For single player games, the lag issues are not nearly as bad as they were, the graphics are a whole lot better than they used to be, and the overall performance of Seven Days to Die has increased dramatically. So it might be kind of an obvious thing to point out, but the console version of Seven Days to Die and the PC version of Seven Days to Die are radically different. Now I'm not going to get into whether or not these changes are good or bad, I will let you folks decide that. And as I stated in the beginning, this is only scratching the surface of the differences between the two versions. There are so many more that we could touch on that this video could be hours and hours long. So if you know of any other major changes or major differences between the console version and the PC version, let me know down in the comments below. And also, let me know your opinions on these changes. Do you like how the PC version has progressed from the console version? Are there some things that you wish they would have kept and some new things that you wish they, they would get rid of? I'd be interested to hear your opinions on that as well. Now, if you'd like to see some more awesome seven days to die tutorial videos, I've created a very special playlist that you can access by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Savin's world. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.